Hey everybody, welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. A little while ago, Mr. and Stitches and I did some yarn shopping. <laughs> and one of the things we picked up was some scrubby. This is Red Heart Scrubby. And a bunch of you had asked if we would give it a try and make a dishcloth and tell you guys what we thought of it. So today we're going to do a tutorial. We're going to make a basic dishcloth. And then afterwards, we're going to do a review on this product. Now, full disclosure, my mother-in-law knit a dishcloth for us several months ago using the Red Heart Scrubby. And we've actually been using the dishcloth when we scrub the dishes. And I have to say, as somebody with arthritis, any extra help I can get when scrubbing is much appreciated. And as a dishcloth, it works really, really well but I haven't had a chance to actually crochet with it yet. So that's what we're gonna figure out today. How well does it crochet and um, what kind of a dishcloth can we make from it? <laughs> so let's grab our hooks, grab our scrubby yarn. We'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a basic dishcloth together. Visit our shop and purchase a pattern. You'll help support our show. And we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. In order to make our scrubby dishcloths, we are going to use about half a ball of Red Heart Scrubby. So each ball is 100 grams. We're going to use approximately 50 grams. You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and I'm using a five and a half millimeter hook. This is also known as an I or a nine in the US or a size five in the UK. However, if you find working with this yarn to be a little bit cumbersome, you can always upsize your hook. You might find that is helpful. It's going to make your stitches a little bit bigger. It's going to make your dishcloth a little bit bigger overall, but that will not change the usefulness of it. Also, you're going to want to make sure you're subscribed if you're not already and click that bell so you never miss another episode of our show. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. All right, due to the nature of this yarn, I'm going to take its label off. And you can see right up front that there's a lot of little tiny, well, scrubby bits that come out of the actual spin of the yarn. So rather than pull from the outside, we want to pull from the inside. So I'm going to stick my fingers in sort of both ends so that they meet in the middle and then I'm going to just pull out a little bit of the inside. I want this ball of yarn to unravel from the inside just so it isn't bouncing around or getting knotted, knotted up on top of me. There we go. So there's the middle. It's actually unwinding pretty neatly but I want it to flow through my fingers. So that's why I'm going to pull from the center of this ball of yarn so that it unravels from the center, making it a little looser and it won't catch up on itself. So there we go. That is our yarn up front. Look at all those little tiny bits. Let's see how it crochets. We're going to begin with a slip knot. Now, because this is a strangely textured yarn, you're going to want to try and keep your tension loose. And if you have trouble doing that, that's why I say you might want to try a larger hook than the one I'm using. So again, I'm using a five and a half millimeter. You might want to try a larger one. We're going to loosely chain 25 chains. So like I said, if you do not tend to crochet loosely, like you have trouble with that, then you may want to try a larger hook. And this is why we want to be able to see our chains. You see how all those little bits of stuff <laughs> flying off the main yarn make it a little bit difficult to see our chains. So if you need to have bigger chains, try a slightly larger hook. 25 chains in our foundation chain row. All right. 25 chains in our foundation chain row. They are not very easy to see. So like I said, if you're using a slightly larger hook, your chains will be a little easier to see. But you should be able to sort of feel your way through them. Keep your foundation chain row nice and flat. And we're going to use the half double crochet stitch because we want a slightly taller stitch that will make it easier to see and or at least to feel our way through as we work our way through this dishcloth. So we're going to loop our yarn over our hook. We're going to skip the first chain from the hook and if it helps grab a loop. You can see there's the chain. We're going to skip that one. Here's the next one. Just plunk your hook into that second chain from the hook and half double crochet. Try to keep your stitch tension nice and loose. So nice and loose. Easy does it. We're going to half double crochet into each chain all the way back. You should have 24 stitches at the end of this row. 
Remember, if you have trouble seeing the next chain, just sort of try to pull it apart a little bit. But this doesn't really matter. If you have trouble seeing the chains, if you wind up with too few, too many, it's okay, it's just a dishcloth and we're just experimenting with the feel of this yarn. So don't knock yourself out. Just try and work a half double crochet into each of those chains all the way across. And if you find the bigger hook helps, go with the bigger hook. All right, there is 24 <laughs> half double crochets all the way across. It's very difficult to see the individual stitches, but if you pull it apart, you can see the little spaces in between. And like I said, if you use a larger hook, you will make this bit a lot easier. Your spaces will be wider, your stitches will be bigger, and you might find that helpful. But because we're using a taller stitch, you should be able to sort of see that stitch running across the top, if not totally clearly, then with you should be able to sort of feel your way along. If you're using single crochet, it makes it a little difficult because those stitches are smaller. So we're using a half double crochet. We're gonna chain one and turn at the end of every row. And we're going to half double crochet into every single stitch across. So we're going to stick with the half double crochet. If you feel your way along, remember to try and keep your stitches nice and loose. Feel your way along. Where you go to put your hook should be the next stitch. So where you would naturally want to look for the next stitch is precisely where that stitch should be. So don't worry too much if you're only grabbing one loop or two loops because of the crazy fr froofy nature <laughs> of this yarn. Ridges aren't going to show if you only get half of a stitch or or the whole thing. It's not really going to show, so don't worry about it. Remember, this is just a little dishcloth we're working on. Try to count as you go. That might be helpful um, if you have trouble seeing the individual stitches. But just take your time. Remember to try and keep your stitch tension nice and loose. And it's going to start looking like this. So there, if you pull it apart, you can see there's a space there's a space, there's a space. The larger hook is definitely a good thing to go with when you're using this scrubby yarn. So just half double crochet in each stitch across and I'll catch up with you at the end. That's the end of row two. You should still have 24 stitches in your row. And if you have trouble counting them, just pull it apart and you should be able to see the little spaces in between a little easier perhaps than the actual stitches themselves. You can stick your fingers right through it. So 24. We're going to chain one, turn at the end of every row, and we're going to work another hmm, 14 rows in total. So we want this to be 16 rows all together. We've already worked two. We're going to work another 14 rows. Chain one, turn at the end of every row, half double crochet in each stitch all the way across. Every row will still have 24 stitches or whatever you wound up with at the end of row one. <laughs> and uh, I will see you at the end of row 16 and we'll see how our dishcloth is shaping up. All right, there is 16 rows. You can count your rows by grabbing the little edge pieces or just pulling it apart so that you could possibly see the individual rows or don't bother counting at all. <laughs> and if you have something that's relatively square, great. If it's a little bit shorter, add a couple more rows. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what we're going for here is a working scrubby dishcloth. Uh, and don't forget that sometimes those edge stitches, when you go to work your last stitch in the row, can sometimes the stitch feels like it maybe is curved down a little bit, so you might have to go looking for that. But once you have a square looking dishcloth, mine is 24 stitches by 16 rows, you can snip your yarn. Fasten off and make sure this is a nice tight knot. You might have to fiddle with it a bit to make sure that it's nice and tight because of all these little extra bits that come off the yarn. Grab your yarn needle and then you can just weave that tail in and out, sort of back and forth across some of the stitches. And you've got two tails, remember there's a little tail you started with and then there's this one. And if you just weave your hook through those stitches, just feel around for them. They do, it does look kind of furry, doesn't it? <laughs> this is another reason I like the wool needles because they have that big eye, so they're easier to uh, thread up. 
So just don't pull too tightly. You don't want to pull your stitches out of alignment. And then just back the way you came. Just stick it right through all those stitches. Little bits and pieces aren't going to show through too much because it's already kind of a crazy jungle <laughs> of yarn. So once you've gone back and forth a couple times and you don't feel like it's going to come out, you can trim any excess or you can just keep weaving until that tail is completely disappeared into your fabric. Fabric, I should say. And then make sure you get the other little one that you started with. So there we go. This dishcloth is about 8 inches by 7 inches, so 8 inches wide by 7 inches tall. If you wanted to make it a perfect square, you could just keep adding some rows, like we said. It's got a nice weight, it's got a nice feel, it's definitely thicker as a crocheted piece of fabric than the knit version that my mother-in-law has already made us. Did I like working with it? I have to say, this yarn really requires a light touch so when I said in the tutorial make sure you keep your stitches nice and loose and if you have to upsize to a larger hook it really does help because a you need to be able to see your stitches and b all of that winding and twisting as we crochet um, with the yarn depending on how you feed it through your fingers it can actually feel like you're scrubbing your fingers after a while so you want to have a light touch with this um, I think it went faster so the longer I got into the uh, actual dishcloth and I knew where the stitches were going to show up the faster I got so it didn't take as long to make as I thought it would and it wasn't too difficult to work with However, if you have trouble um, seeing things up close, or maybe you're brand new to crochet and you're still not really sure what your stitches are supposed to look like or how far apart they are, I would not recommend working with Red Heart Scrubby right off the bat. So the stitches are not as easy to see as working with uh, you know, a yarn that doesn't have a bunch of little pieces flying off of it. Um, and of course, if you're brand new to crochet, working with any kind of textured yarn can be really annoying. But um, I have been crocheting for quite a long time, so I didn't find it that troubling. But I will say, definitely a larger hook will make it easier if you do want to give this a try. The nice thing about this yarn is that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you get half the stitch, the whole stitch, if you end up adding more stitches or not. What you're trying to do is make a usable working dishcloth and this stuff is definitely scrubby. Like I said, we've been using one that my mother-in-law knit us already for several months. It really scrubs well, so I can already attest to the fact that this works really well as a scrubby dishcloth. Um, working with it is a little bit challenging, but once you get the hang of it, it's not so bad. It's not soft, it's polyester, uh, but that's exactly why it makes a good scrubby dishcloth. It's not soft, it's going to be kind of hard on those baked on bits and pieces you find on your dishes. <laughs> I do like the weight of this yarn. Uh, I like the way it feels as a crochet dishcloth, and um, I love that color. I absolutely love the super bright colors they were able to make that yarn out of. So, as far as a cheery dishcloth goes, that has Jada and Stitches written all over it. <laughs> I can't wait to put that to use in the kitchen. So there you go. I liked this yarn. It's okay for making a basic dishcloth. I definitely wouldn't want to try a complicated pattern with it. Um, and I wouldn't want to make a project that was very big just because it's a little trying, trying to see the glass, trying to see this, the stitches is a little bit difficult and it is scrubby. It does want to sort of tear at your fingers a little bit if you work with it for too long, especially if your hands are warm um, and you're generating any kind of friction. So um, all in all, I liked it. I'll definitely use up the rest to make a couple more uh, dishcloths and um, it really does work. So if you're just eager to make up some really helpful dishcloths for people, then I highly recommend that because that really is a good dishcloth. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed working up a dishcloth along with us today and a little review on a product that you may or may not have had a chance to use yet. And we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, happy cleaning, <laughs> and we will see you soon. Bye everybody.